Incidentally, that's not Fort Knox. It's a film set here, Goldfinger in Buckinghamshire, Pinewood. Uh, I'm not James Bond. He's a fictitious character, as so many are in Fleming's books. Uh, except in one, a uh, Geoffrey Boothroyd, a Scotsman who lives in Glasgow, whose hobby is guns. My name's Geoffrey Boothroyd. I'm not Major Boothroyd, but I do share with the Major an interest in firearms. My first contact with Ian Fleming was after reading Casino Royale. I enjoyed this immensely. Uh, so much so that certain inaccuracies in the book made me write to Fleming and say that uh, I didn't think Bond was going to last very long if he used a two-fired Beretta pistol, which is a lady's gun and not a very nice lady at that, and uh, used his chamois leather holster. Now, this is the gun Boothroyd objected to. The real Boothroyd, that is. Bond's favorite Beretta. Bond was using the shoulder holster at the time. But his favorite holster was uh, chamois leather, because you see, it didn't spoil the line of the jack. There's all sorts of, of different kinds of holsters. They're all made of stout leather, and there's nothing soft or flabby about them, as one would have with a chamois leather holster. It's a soft holster. is liable to get caught. Uh, people who carry guns will find that most authors prefer uh, the gun to be carried in the shoulder holster. Now... I personally uh, prefer the belt holster. Now, you imagine you're on the receiving end of this, and uh, we're going to do a quick draw on you. Ready? One of the most spectacular weapons that uh, we've probably seen in recent years was the Armalite rifle uh, that Bond used in the film from Russia with Love. Uh, this is actually a, a real-life weapon, and it's used as a survival gun. It's got telescopic sights and it all dismounts and you can put it away quite neatly into a small package for you to carry it. The man behind the gun's got to be really with it. He's got to be trained and in practice. Now, we'll go and have a look at this setup I've got over here. This is a no draw, in the middle of which are two matches. I'm going to try and uh, light these two matches by shooting at them from the other end of the room. Now we're ready for the first shot. Pistols brought up, sights are aligned. That's it, that's got one of them. The most important thing, irrespective of whether we're dealing with revolvers or automatic pistols, is stopping power. And this is, a, again, a very debatable thing. Uh, you can look in the manufacturer's tables for uh, muzzle velocities, muzzle energies, and all the rest of it. But after all, in real life, we're shooting at human beings. The Beretta Automatic. Until recently, Bond's favorite gun. The Volta PPK. The gun that Bond now uses. Chosen by Ian Fleming and gives you a very rapid first shot. And that's the one that counts. Here's my favorite. The 44 Ruger Magnum, a man-sized gun, but with this length of barrel, too big to hide under an agent's coat. Let's see what the guns will do. First, the Beretta. Not much damage, a small, clean hole. Now for the Volta. Heavier caliber, it should have more stopping power. And the hole's definitely bigger and would do far more damage to a man. And I'll have a go with my heavy artillery, the 44 Magnum. A heavier bullet, traveling much faster than the other two. Makes a jolly good can opener, but not practical for Bond. You'll see the Volta in the latest Bond films, and uh, although I'd still like to see him using a proper revolver, uh, this I don't think is going to happen now because uh, the inflaming isn't there to write anymore and the Volta is really part of the Bond image.